All right, and welcome. This is Jan with another fun little session for you all. I call this the five minute Facebook pixel setup, guys. A little bit of tech here, not too bad though. So, first step go to business.facebook.com. Make sure you're inside what we call the Facebook Business Manager. And uh, this is uh, sort of a piece of it right here. Uh, the way that I got here is I went to the events manager on the side. Uh, there's a lot of other settings here. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Go to the events manager because basically the Facebook pixel is a piece of code, a script, essentially JavaScript that sits on your web pages and they do amazing things. Uh, one of the things that it does, which is very important, is collects data on your visitors. And that can also be purely, you know, demographic, infographic, technographic, all of the above. But most importantly, is the events. So what's happening when they're on page A, they go to an opt-in page, they go to a thank you page. How is that all tracked? And how does Facebook recognize the movement, the patterns, the sequence in that uh, particular example to essentially give you more of those people that you want? I mean, that's a simple way of looking at it. Uh, the pixel essentially allows you to draw data back into your Facebook ads that it learns from, that it can collect even more data, but also compile data so that it gets you the right people for the right purposes, depending on your campaign type. Now, that was a big sentence right here. It's okay. Um, this is not meant to be a, you know, three-hour walkthrough of how to set up the Facebook, Facebook pixel uh, the meta pixel, I should say. You'll hear me talk about meta and Facebook intertwined. It's okay. It's the same thing. So uh, what we do here is, as I said, we go to the events manager. Uh, we head on over to data sources and you're going to see um, some information that looks a little bit similar to this. Uh, now, if it's brand new, you won't have any data here. But uh, essentially, um, I think the way it works now is when there's nothing here, it's going to say create, uh, you know, add new, something like that. Since I have something here, uh, I'm just simply going to go and add a, an event. And so I want to add a new integration. That's the option. Uh, we can talk about custom conversions in another video. That's a way for you to really get very, very specific about how you can return values and data sets when particular events happen through a sequence like a funnel that I just described. And I'm going to show you a, an example of a simple funnel here in a second. Um, so I'm going to head, uh, go ahead and add new integration. Uh, we're not going to deal with any of these options. It's simply meta pixel. So here we go. It's not the Facebook pixel. It's the meta pixel, guys and gals. Uh, come in here. And uh, next step is basically adding that code to your website. So one of the things that we see often in our agency is we go out and we want to implement Facebook ads for clients. Uh, it's either old, outdated pixel, no pixel, incorrect pixel. People are confused about how to place the pixel, what the pixel is. I talked a little bit about what that is right here. But uh, ultimately, it's all about getting organized with account to pixel match. So if you have an account A, you want to have pixel A. If you have account B, you want to have pixel B. Um, you don't want to mix, mix and match too much of this. Uh, the better segmented it is, uh, more awesome you are. All right. So manually add code to website. So if you have a website developer, he or she can add this code very easily. Typically, it's added either in the header or the footer. We prefer the header. Um, if it's WordPress, they have all kinds of plugins that you can use to get this in here. But uh, ultimately, we just want to kind of go through and make sure that we follow the steps here. And um, I actually did go through this already, so pardon me. See, I'm sneaking ahead here. But what I wanted to show you is uh, what the script looks like and how you can tune it in this simple example that I gave of a landing page, an opt-in form, and a thank you page. Uh, how do you track the leads? So you feed it back to your ads manager so you can actually count how many leads you got. The value of those can be assigned. There's a number of things that you can do with that. But ultimately, at the basic, most basic level, uh, we're going to simply apply the code and we're going to tweak it slightly inside the code uh, with some little simple script additions and you'll be good to go. Um, 
and I'll show you also, actually, we'll do that in another video. There's a way that you can do this without going into the code and, you know, hacking it, so to speak. But I like to manage the code very tightly. I want to make sure that everything is applied the way that I want to. And that comes from my developer back background. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this code, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to add it to the website header. Yeah, okay, so they, they want to put this in the head. This has changed a little bit over the years, but uh, ultimately uh, what we're looking at here, guys and girls, is the uh, Metapixel code. Looks something like this. And it's been this way for a pretty long time. There's some tweaks being made to it, but essentially this is the code between here and here. And you place that in the head section of your website. So if you don't know what the head section is, it's basically the construct of an HTML page, which is HTML top, HTML bottom. Then it has the title and it has a head section. And inside that head section is where you actually place this code. So here you can see this would be your uh, pixel ID. So it initializes it and it adds a, a track view, page view, and you are on your way. Uh, now it's actually tracking all your views. You can think of this also as a simple way, if you're familiar with Google Analytics, that essentially every time a page is rendered, it's feeding data points back to your Facebook Ads Manager and ultimately Facebook and uh, or Meta. So... <laughs> What um, uh, what this piece is right here is in the case of issues with particular script not rendering properly. Uh, you can use kind of a one-on-one -on -one or one-by-one -one, uh, small image that actually renders it by this TR function here. Um, now, you just simply want to include everything from MetaPixel code top, Metal, uh, pixel, uh, pixel code end right here and you are good to go. Deploy that out. And once you do, you wanna make sure that you render your page and watch for your uh, pixel helper. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna put that in here. <clears throat> There's a plugin for Chrome, Chrome extension, and it's called the Facebook or Meta Pixel Helper. So you wanna install that and it's gonna tell you it's gonna go green. It's gonna tell you the ID. It's gonna say, hey, you are rendered in the page view. All is good. Okay, so once we have this out here, uh, we're, we have completed the first step. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through a little bit of code. As I mentioned, it's a little techy right here, but not too bad. Um, uh, what you would need to do to modify this code slightly. Now, the way that I found out about this particular code is um, you can go to this. Uh, you can basically just type uh, Metapixel standard events and it goes to the uh, Facebook page right here. And uh, if you can see here, um, if, I, if, uh, if you recall just a few minutes ago, I mentioned the FBQ function of uh, page view, right? Well, you can track payment info, you can track add to cart, uh, add to wish list, complete registration for webinars and things like that. But you may be thinking, wow, this is, I'm, I'm getting annoyed already. I have to deal with all this code. No, as I said, there are ways you can do this automated. Uh, for instance, for Shopify, it's all integrated uh, through um, uh, connection points and APIs that take care of all of this for you. Now, because we're doing this sort of manually and step by step, I want you to understand what's going on behind the scenes here. So what we're doing is we're essentially kind of going a little ninja here on this to, to track it down. Now, what I'm looking for as I'm scrolling here is uh, looking for the lead function here. So this is submission of information by a customer with the understanding that they may be contacted at a later date by your business. For example, submitting a form or signing up for a trial. That's exactly what we need, guys and gals. So what I did is I basically stole this and put it in here already. Already, And what I would do is I would render this code with the track lead right there. See, I just entered it right there. So now this is going to render a page view, but it's going to feed back to the ads manager, to Facebook. This is a lead. And guess what? This is what we would do. Um, we've got to take this off. This is what we would do in this simple example that I gave you earlier. You have your landing page, you place your pixel code, which we saw from above, 
Uh, and this is the non-lead um, confirmation page. This is basically just, they saw your ad, they clicked on it, they went to the lander, the pixel was rendered, there's an opt-in form and a submit button, a headline, you know, some benefit uh, statements, etc. Very simple. This is simply maybe a, 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 you know, 10 things you should know about X checklist. So it's a simple lead landing page. Uh, on the thank you page, you place the pixel code, but we add this FBQ track lead because when you render it and add this code, aha, Facebook says, you, you are designating this as a lead to you. It's an important one for your business. This could be considered a marketing qualified lead, an MQL. Great. Thanks for submitting that. We're going to keep a, a note of that and we're going to allow this to be uh, optimized over time. Uh, through this lead objective. So this is essentially kind of the baby steps uh, through this from setting it up inside, uh, let's go through it here, uh, inside the business manager, um, adding the code to the website header, and um, uh, simply doing a little bit of mix and matching of code here, uh, applying it to the thank you page for the lead objective, and that's it. Now, there are many other uh, types of objectives here. As I mentioned, it's the complete the registration. There's the add to cart. There's the purchase event. Very, very important. But essentially, this is basically your walkthrough. Now, I said this was the five-minute walkthrough. It's uh, 11 minutes so far. I love to talk on camera, and I'm trying to help you think about this in a very simple way. It's not that complex. But uh, most of the time, uh, people skip through this quite quickly and don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. Take a little extra time here and read up on this so that you get a, get a better understanding on not only how it works, but what you need to apply to make these events fire back. All right? Well, I'll take good care, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't already, guys and gals, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. If you want me to create another video on next level of how you automate this without coding, I'll do it. All right. Take care.